In 2010, an explosion on BP's offshore oil rig caused the largest accidental marine oil spill in the history of the petroleum industry. Toxic crude oil gushed out of a ruptured pipe at a rate of 340,000 gallons per day. 87 days and 210 million gallons of oil later, officials were finally able to stop the flow. The oil spill prompted much debate and raised the question, is offshore drilling necessary or too harmful? Today, 3,850 oil rigs dot the Gulf of Mexico. Offshore drilling not only allows us to reach the untapped reserves of oil, but it also allows our country to be more self-sufficient and not have to rely on other countries for our oil supply. Offshore drilling itself also creates many jobs and helps foster a prosperous economy. America relies heavily on petroleum as a source for many products. Oil is not only refined to create gasoline, which is commonly used to power planes, motor vehicles, trains, and ships, but it is also used as a source of compounds that can be recombined or altered to make petrochemicals. According to Adam Miller's book, Offshore Drilling, petrochemicals, in turn, are used to make a vast array of products, including acetic acid, ammonia, polyvinyl chloride, polyethylene, lubricants, adhesives, agrochemicals, fragrances, food additives, packaging, paint, and pharmaceutical products. Oil is even used to generate electricity. Although offshore drilling has these benefits, and the crude oil we obtain through this drilling is refined to produce a huge array of products which are integral to our daily lives, drilling also has multiple negative effects. Offshore drilling produces the risk of oil spills, which introduce both toxic petroleum and toxic dispersants, a product used to clean up the oil, into the environment. But even if oil is not introduced into the environment through spills, the drilling process itself produces many toxic chemicals which have devastating effects on marine life, the environment, and even humans. Perhaps explaining the composition of oil can help to show just how devastating offshore drilling can be. Petroleum is made of the organic polymers carbohydrates, lipids, lignin, and protein. Over millions of years, pressure and heat convert these organic compounds into crude oils, molecules predominantly composed of only hydrogen and carbon called hydrocarbons. Petroleum hydrocarbons can be grouped into two categories, aromatics and alkanes. Aromatics, which are shaped in six carbon rings, tend to be more toxic to marine life. A common type of aromatic petroleum is polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, abbreviated PAHs, which is very difficult to remove from the environment. Alkanes are usually less toxic than aromatics because they naturally biodegrade more easily, as most can be ingested as food by certain microorganisms. However, PAHs are not the only toxic component of crude oil, which contains benzene, toluene, and xylene, all belonging to the single ring aromatic group. Benzene is extremely toxic and is a known carcinogen, although it is less persistent than PAHs. When these toxic components of oil are expelled into aquatic environments through offshore drilling mishaps, the results are catastrophic. In the 1989 Exxon Valdez oil spill alone, crude oil killed over 250,000 seabirds, 2,800 sea otters, 250 bald eagles, 300 harbor seals, and 22 killer whales, as well as countless herring and salmon. According to Holly K. Ober in her article, The Effects of Oil Spills, the PAHs, benzene, toluene, and xylene, found in oil, can also modify invertebrate feeding habits, disrupt shell development, and cause slow suffocation. Other effects of these toxins on aquatic animals include inability to reproduce, abnormal behaviors, a debilitated immune system, and skin irritability as well. The oil itself is not the only component of drilling that can be toxic to the environment. Oil spills are commonly cleaned by dispersants, detergent-like substances that are used to emulsify oil floating on the surface so it can sink below the water. Using dispersants makes the beaches cleaner but causes destruction at the bottom of the ocean far out of sight, according to an article in the magazine Oceanus. According to Bob Kavner's book, Disaster on the Horizon, 
Although officials claim that dispersants are perfectly safe for both marine life and humans, a commonly used dispersant, Corexit, banned in the UK but used freely in the US, has been proven to be highly toxic. Corexit contains benzene and 2-butazylenethanol, linked to the destruction of red blood cells which causes kidney, spleen, and liver damage. It also causes breathing difficulties, skin irritation, physical weakness, convulsions, birth defects, and fewer offspring in mammals. Even if an oil spill does not occur, the drilling process itself can have a monumental impact on the environment. Sound waves used in seismic surveys of the seabed can decrease fish catch, damage the hearing capacity of various marine species, and may lead to marine mammal strandings. Drilling also produces other hazardous materials in the waste products of drilling muds and produced waters. Drilling muds, used for lubrication and cooling of the drill pipe, release toxic chemicals that often affect marine life. A single drilling platform normally discharges over 90,000 metric tons of drilling fluids and metal cuttings into the ocean. Produced water is fluid trapped underground and brought up with oil and gas. Produced water are usually composed of 30 to 40 percent oil, and thus over 70,000 gallons of oil are expelled through produced water in the Cook Inlet in Alaska alone. In addition, tons of drilling fluid, metal cuttings including toxic metals such as lead, chromium, and mercury, as well as carcinogens such as benzene, are dumped into the ocean every year. Although offshore drilling allows the U.S. to retrieve untapped petroleum, which is used not only as an energy source, but also to make a huge array of products, drilling facilities produce toxic chemicals and pose the environmental risk of oil spills, which can be devastating to the environment. I strongly feel that offshore drilling should be gradually reduced, while funding for research to find alternative energy sources as well as a safe dispersant are increased. Although alternative energy sources could eventually replace petroleum as a source of energy, oil is still needed to create a variety of products from asphalt to pharmaceutical products. Because of this, offshore drilling should only be diminished, not completely eliminated. Oil companies should fund research to find ways to prevent future oil spills and to create safer dispersants. The government should invest in finding alternative, safe, and clean energy sources. Hopefully, taking these measures will help prevent future oil spills and protect the Earth's fragile environment. Mama no say, uh, all the water don't mix. Surely, oh, don't go good for no fish. Oh, it ain't my fault. Big P, big pimp, and big problem, bad presence. Billionaire pirate born a point first pressure. Oh, it ain't my fault. Say, man. Push the marsh back, it's where the hurricane shelter in the garden at. Oh, it ain't my fault. Shit, from the Gulf of Mexico to the boat level wall, something gone wrong with the somebody.